Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, all of our staff and all of the people that are helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. It is so amazing that you are joining with us today in online worship. It is a special day of celebration, so we're particularly glad you are here. I want to encourage everyone to use the contact form that is pinned in the comment section. Please fill that out. There's a place there for your contact information. Um, also, there's a place there for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. This contact form is a way that we can connect with you, that we can come up alongside you and, and encourage you in your life of faith and to continue to invite you to online worship and small groups and service and all of those things. So please use that contact form today, particularly if this is your first time to worship with us with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We'd love to be able to connect with you. 
When we do gather together as Douglas Avenue, we covenant together to be a blessing and to participate. Now, that participation means that we're really going to participate in this service of worship. So we encourage you to turn off other devices, uh, turn down other distractions, really focus in, maybe light a candle to help you focus. And then whatever it is that we're doing, we just encourage you to do it. If it's time to sing, then go ahead and sing. When we're praying, pray. When we're uh, reading, read. Do all of those things with us and focus fully participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing as well. That means that in everything we do, in the way that we comment, in the comment section, the way we're with our households in worship, with our community at large, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. As I said, today is a special time of worship for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church as we are giving thanks to God for Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, who has been serving as our associate pastor of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church while launching Wouldn't It Be Lovely. We are marking Margaret Ann's transition in ministry as she now serves full-time as the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Wouldn't It Be Lovely or Wibble is a social enterprise whose home is with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And we are so excited to share with you in this worship service of celebration and thanksgiving with Wibble and Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup. Good morning, I'm Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, the Executive Director and Pastor at Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Today's worship service is so exciting. I am so thankful for Douglas Avenue and I'm so grateful for all of you. And to be able to spend today worshiping God and thanking God for all the blessings that have gone through the last five years through Wouldn't It Be Lovely, it is just an honor. Early in our worship service, we always pass the peace, a way to share our love with each other. Um, we are gonna do that in just a little bit, but I've been told before that, there are some special guests that will pass the peace with us. Well, hi friends. My name is Nicole Cox. I serve as the directing pastor at Willow Hill United Methodist Church in Germantown Hills, Illinois up by Peoria. But until last July, I was serving as one of the pastors at Springfield First. So I am familiar with you, you and our community there in Springfield. And I just want to say, Margaret Ann, what a tremendous work you have done in the community for Springfield. Your creativity and hard work knows no bounds and uh, Springfield is a better place because of you. So thank you for all that you have poured into the community there and all that you have done to love and support the women of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. And uh, your, your compassion has just uh, overflowed into this wonderful ministry and it has created something really special. So thank you so much for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. And I'm just praying God's blessing upon you and upon Wouldn't It Be Lovely. I love you dearly. Thank you so much for loving Jesus and loving others so well. And uh, we'll see you later. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Brian Coughlin. I'm the pastor at the Rochester United Methodist Church. I've known Margaret Ann for a number of years. I knew her through uh, my church in Auburn, and I also knew her uh, through uh, covenant groups. And what I can say about her is that if you took the, 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 the wisdom of a prophet and the heart of a nurse, you, there's Margaret Ann right there for you. Peace be with you. and also with you. Hello, I'm Brad Watkins, the district superintendent for the Sangamon River District. I am overjoyed and honored to be assigned as the district superintendent for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and for the burgeoning ministry that we're celebrating today of Wouldn't It Be Lovely? It is just such an exciting time to be in ministry and Margaret Ann Jessup is just one of our, our leaders that we are so excited and joyful about. We are joyful uh, with her journey that she has taken with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, the journey that Douglas Avenue has been on with Wouldn't It Be Lovely Ministries, the women and the families that have been served, and most importantly, 
will now be served in the future by Wouldn't It Be Lovely Incorporated. I just love saying that, that they are incorporated and that they are now continuing and expanding on the ministry of hope, reconciliation, and reclamation that they have been on with women and families and others in your congregation. Again, it's just a, a joy to celebrate this time of birth and growth for you, for Douglas Avenue, and for Wouldn't It Be Lovely. And I wish and pray nothing, nothing but good things for Margaret Ann Jessup, and for all the other volunteers and leaders in these ministries. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Becca Philbrick and I'm the Director of Music Ministries here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm here with Marcia Stout, Meredith Brown, and Janet Schmidt. Please join us as we sing The Gift of Love. My name is Connie Sims. I'm a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, and I'm also a board member of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Please join me with our opening prayer. Ever present God, we feel your presence with us today in this time of worship, and we yearn to feel your presence each and every day of our lives. Speak to us with your words of grace. Reveal yourself in the power of your love. Nourish us with the water of your healing. Help us know deep within your abundant love that has no end. In the name of your love, we pray, amen. It is time for small talk. So I want to encourage all the children who are gathered in online worship to get close into your screen and your device so you can see everything that goes on with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, who's our director of children and youth ministries and her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close for small talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud and his wonderful assistant, and 
Vlad is very busy today. He's making something very special. We've been talking in Celebrate Wonder, we've been talking about love. And one of the things about love is that God wants us to love everybody. Love your neighbor as yourself, even love your enemies. Now, we have some wonderful examples of folks that do really, really good at that, walking around our own church. And one of them in particular that comes to mind, we're kind of celebrating today, Pastor Margaret Ann Jessup. Yes, and wouldn't it be lovely? Now, Laud here would like to show you, he has his own wouldn't it be lovely shirt. We made it for him because so far, wouldn't it be lovely doesn't have like a sheep in sheeps and shirts line. Might talk about that. But anyway, we made his own uh, Wibble shirt and he is painting for Margaret Ann today. Something special, he tells me. Yes, are you ready? Are you done? Now this is something that we are going to present to Margaret Ann sometime this week and I'm sure she will, she will put it in her office. Look, he's made a heart with love on it. Just like, wouldn't it be lovely? He's even signed it here, Laud the Lamb. That is beautiful, Laud. Yeah, you're gonna have to make me one too, Laud, okay? Maybe? So remember, just like Margaret Ann does every day, love everyone like you love yourself. Love your neighbor, love each other. And if you see Margaret Ann, give her a great big hug from us. We'll get this to you this week, Margaret Ann. We love you. Bye. Hi, I'm Jen DeYoung, co-chair of the board for Wouldn't It Be Lovely? And today we are so happy to celebrate all that Wouldn't It Be Lovely has been and is and what we are currently. Wouldn't It Be Lovely is a social enterprise here in Springfield that supports women, not just with employment, but really we want to be a beacon of hope. We want to offer our women hope and love and support. And so we do that by helping them learn skills, uh, painting furniture, sewing, and just offering all kinds of resources to them as they go along their journey of working with us. And we are just so thrilled to be able to support these women who are coming from places of poverty, sometimes addiction, abuse, and really hard circumstances. And so this is really an opportunity for us to come alongside them and support them in their journey back to healing. Hi, I'm Dee Dee Murphy, and I am also a co-chair with Jen for the board of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Um, as Jen explained, um, Wouldn't It Be Lovely is, is so much more than just a place for someone to work. It's a community that surrounds the women with hope, friendship, acceptance, lots of resources, and most importantly, love. Um, for some, this might be their first positive circle of friendship as an adult. Um, also, I want to be sure to thank Margaret Ann for allowing us to be part of this wonderful organization. I am inspired daily by her vision, her hope, her dedication, as well as her love. Margaret Ann is the heart of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and I am forever grateful for her leadership. And now we'd like you to hear from some of the beautiful women in Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Hi, I'm Alexis. Um, I'm a Wibble associate here and the lead sewer. Um, and I would just like to say Wibble um, has helped support me through all the hurdles, working to get my kids home and through my pregnancy. Um, they support me now as a mother. Uh, they helped push me to start college classes, which my anxiety kept me from for years before. Um, and I am hopeful with the support here um, that I will be a successful student, um, mother, and leader here and in recovery. 
Hi, I'm Megan Murray with Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and I've been here for five years, and I am the lead designer and staff coordinator. I'm also a member of Douglas Avenue as well, and my hope for 2021 is that we can help more women like me. I love helping others and teaching them how to paint and mentoring them and help them struggle with things that I've struggled in the past with, and the more women we can help, the better, and that's my hope for 2021. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shayla, and I am a part of the Wibble family, and I am the shipping and packing here. Um, I love everybody here. Everybody is so inspirational. They have all helped me so, so much here, especially in my hope to get my son back in my life. I have... My hope is to get my son back permanently in my life. I see him on weekends and have him on weekends, but I really just want him in my presence at all times. I want my family all together. It's slowly coming back. And this Wibble and everyone here and all the ladies and Margaret Ann, they have helped me so much in my sobriety and my recovery in getting him back slowly. I just want to thank everybody for that. Hello, my name is Malia Schmidt and I'm an associate at Wouldn't It Be Lovely. I'm also a member of the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Uh, my role at Wibble is the inventory specialist. Um, I've been at Wibble since it started four years ago. Um, I've been in and out of the program working on my mental health and how to have positive relationships with other people. Yeah, and um, I know a lot of you know me out there and have been on the journey with me for about eight years and have seen a huge difference and I thank you. And for 2021, I am going to be graduating Wibble this spring, and but I'm going to be continuing working as a permanent employee um, because they work with me so well and accept me. And same with the church. Um, the love that surrounds me has made a huge difference, and I hope to continue to be positive and have routines and stable relationships in my life and to be happy and that's all hi my name is Charmella Williams and I'm here at Wibble and I'm a painter and my hope for 2021 is to complete school and give my GED and get a better job and be able to support my family better and I wouldn't be able to do that without Wibble thank you Please join us in singing, Fill My Cup, Lord.
I'm Lori Payne Mullet. I serve on the SPRC and I'm on the board of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Hi, I'm Julie Crable. I play in the bell choir and I'm on the board of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Our reading from the Bible is John chapter four, verses four through 29. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Now, Jesus had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near a plot of ground Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to come, keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming is coming, and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called, called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. It is my deepest honor to welcome the Reverend Miriam Snyder as our guest preacher here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. Reverend Snyder is pastor of Chatham United Methodist Church. She is a dear colleague and friend and an ardent supporter of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. She also serves as our clergy stole model for Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Reverend Snyder is a graduate of Duke Divinity School. She is an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church and is passionate about all ministries that equip and grow vibrant, world-transforming disciples of Jesus Christ. Please join with me in welcoming Reverend Miriam Snyder. Hello, friends, and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First, let me say what an absolute privilege it is for me to be with you this morning. I have long, long admired the work of Wouldn't It Be Lovely and its founder, Pastor Margaret Ann, and I'm just thrilled to be a part of this celebration today. 
I took notice of Wouldn't It Be Lovely long before I moved to the Springfield area a couple of years ago. And what I thought at first when I encountered your, your mission and your purpose was that what was happening on Douglas Avenue was pretty neat. That you were doing good work, that you were making an impact uh, in lives and that that was significant. But soon I discovered that what was happening uh, at Wouldn't It Be Lovely was better than neat, right? That, that what is happening is this beautiful, messy, awesome, scrappy work uh, of real lives being transformed through genuine love. And, and I say genuine love because I know that loving others the way that they need to be loved is not easy, right? That often we want to love others the way that we desire to be loved. But what genuine love requires of us is to love others the way that they, that they need to be loved. That to love is to see someone the way that God intends for them to be seen, as Dostoevsky says. So your mission, friends, your mission is just so very beautiful. You surround women, you surround one another really with the support and the encouragement that is so absolutely necessary to stay on the path of recovery. In the process, however, what I believe that we are witnessing at Wibble is not only a supportive community that seeks to love well, right, to, to see one another as God intended, but is helping everyone involved to see themselves as God intended. And, and this is what I believe is, the, is the, the healing power of genuine love. So thank you. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for the love that you share. Thank you for taking seriously Jesus's command to love others as he has loved us. And thank you for the privilege of being with you. I'm just so very grateful to be a witness of this beautiful healing work. And now, dear friends, will you pray for me as I pray for you this morning? And then I want to spend a few minutes looking at a beautiful story in the Gospel of John. Oh God, as we encounter your scriptures, as we encounter a great demonstration of Jesus, of healing love from a story in the Bible, we pray that you would open our hearts to listen and to hear what it is that you need to say to each of us today. Amen. So friends, I confess that I chose one of my very favorite stories in the Gospels for us today. It's the story of a woman coming to see herself the way God intended. Jesus loves her in the very way that she needed to be loved. And it's, it's healing. It's, it's what I would call a healing story. It might not look like a healing story, right? The woman isn't noticeably ill. She's not suffering from a debilitating injury. She's not blind or leprous or, or possessed, but she is very, very thirsty. Very, very thirsty. She's parched from being misused and misunderstood and mistreated. She's thirsty for someone to see her as more than the accumulation of a lifetime of bad choices or as being repetitively discarded. She's dehydrated from all of the shameful looks and the demoralizing glances and the gossip. She's, honestly, she's thirsty for a healing that she cannot even imagine is possible in this life. Until one person breaks all the rules and asks her for a drink of water. Now we know that this person is not just any person. We know that this person is Jesus. And we know that it doesn't matter what he must risk in order to befriend her, what, what rule he must break or barrier he must bring down in order to prevent her, that he will. Because we know Jesus is the one who breaks every barrier and discards any rule that prevents him from seeing someone the way that God intended. And Jesus breaks a lot of rules, 
right? The, the woman in our story is a Samaritan woman, and Jesus is obviously a Jewish man. And there were all kinds of cultural and religious notions in the first century that built all of these invisible barriers between, between Jews and Samaritans. They weren't to eat together or to talk to one another or even to enter one another's homes, let alone maybe even towns. And then there were all these other notions that were that, that built unnecessary and harmful barriers between men and, and women. And yet here is Jesus sharing the longest conversation recorded in all of the Gospels with a Samaritan woman. I mean, it's, it is such a significant scene, this befriending that takes place at noon at a well. You know, if anything, the stories about Jesus in the Gospels make it absolutely clear that our human determinations of who is in and who's out and who's clean and who's unclean and who's accepted and who's unacceptable, who's with us or who's against us, right? That, that none of that has any place in the kingdom of God. And Jesus demonstrates this as he sits by a well in the middle of the day sharing a drink of water and a conversation with someone that was thirsty for the living water that only Jesus can provide. The theologian Brad Jerzak says this, he says, when we see Jesus in action, we are seeing the true heart of God, the restorer of lives. So when we see Jesus, breaking down barriers to be with. When we see Jesus multiplying bread, when we see Jesus walking on water, when we see Jesus creating eyes so the blind can see, when we see Jesus raising his friends from the dead, we see what's at the very heart of God, the restorer of lives. So when we see Jesus tending to the heart and soul of a woman at a well, we see exactly what God is like. Jesus, we discover, is on God's healing mission. And friends, you know, right? You know exactly what is required to restore a piece of furniture, right? You know that restoration requires careful tending, that it requires a desire to see something that has been used or broken or neglected become absolutely beautiful right? To become what God intended for it to be. And you, you know that restoration requires tenderness. You know that it also requires really difficult things like truthfulness and honesty, which can be really, that can be tough work to be involved in, but mostly you know that restoration requires healing love. It requires a whole lot of love. And I believe that there are at least two things that we see Jesus demonstrate about this healing kind of love as he converses with the Samaritan woman at the well. Two demonstrations that I believe guide us as we seek to love others the way that God loves us. And so first is this. Jesus demonstrates that healing love is self-giving love. Healing love is self-giving love. I truly believe that love is the only force that is, that is powerful enough to heal our hearts, but it's not a coercive love, right? Healing love is a love that is, that is cruciform in its shape and in its practice, right? It, it's love that looks like Jesus taking a risk to speak to a woman in need of restoration at a well in the middle of the day. It's, it's love that looks like Jesus, arms outstretched on a cross. Healing love is, is self-giving, sacrificial love. Now, shame may seem like an effective strategy to get someone to change their behavior, right? And shame may even put on a disguise to look like love, but shame has an agenda. And, and, and shame is coercive and it's corrosive to us. It's not love. So Jesus doesn't do shame, right? He, shame is what brought the woman to the well at noon. But, but self-giving love is what quenched her thirst 
and invited her to become all that God intended for her to be. Now, something I find interesting is that John doesn't tell us the name of the woman. He, he doesn't tell us the name of the woman that sits by the well, but John's readers would have known her name. She, she had a reputation. Uh, no, not for having five husbands or for being a Samaritan, but because, but because she went on to become a prominent evangelist in the early church. Her name was known across the Christian world at the time. John doesn't tell us her name, but everyone would have known exactly who John was talking about. Her name, as the church calls her, is Saint Fotina, meaning the enlightened one. And according to the story, right, according to the story that we find in church history, Fotina had several children, one of which was a commander in the Roman army. And there's a story that says that when, when he was discovered as being a follower of Christ, that he was called before the emperor and he was ordered to renounce his faith. He refused, and so his entire family, his mother and his sisters, were all then brought in, and they were ordered to do the same. And they all, they all refused. And so they were imprisoned uh, or tortured or killed. And the story claims that St. Fotina was ordered to serve the emperor's daughter as a slave. But while doing so, she shared her faith in and converted the emperor's daughter and all of the daughter's court. And this so enraged the Emperor Nero that he had Fotina flung into a well where she died. She gave up her life in a well, right? A, a place just like where she found her true life when she met Jesus. And then second is this. Jesus demonstrates that healing love enables the Samaritan woman to be honest with herself. This is, this is significant, that she is able to, to look at herself and be honest with herself. And you know, this doesn't mean that, that, she, that her past didn't matter to Jesus. It absolutely mattered. But Jesus doesn't condemn her. Right In the scriptures, Jesus is so much more likely to point out the faults of those who think that they are faultless so we see that Jesus doesn't dwell on her faults, doesn't dwell on her sin. He doesn't, he doesn't shame her, but he invites her into a life that she's never imagined before. And this is a love that heals. This is a love that enables her to look at herself and say, I am so thirsty and I need this, this living water that you speak of. This is what enables her to look at herself through his eyes, to see herself in a whole new way. And later in the story, we see how she leaves her water jar and runs to let the people know that the very people that she's worked so hard to avoid, she runs to them and, and tells them they need to come and see the man who told her everything that she had ever done. Now, now, we might think that this sounds scary, right? Do we really want Jesus to tell us everything that we've ever done when we've worked so hard to make sure none of that is ever seen, right? That that's kind of all hidden, right? Isn't this what we're actually kind of afraid of, right? That, that we'll be found out for, for, for what we've done or for who we are. But the woman in our story, she finds relief in knowing that Jesus knows everything about her and loves her still, loves her the same. We could learn so much from her courage to come and tell others, you need to come and meet this, this person who's told me everything I have ever done. The, the preacher Barbara Brown Taylor, she talks about this uh, passage in this way. She says this, she says, by telling the woman who she is, Jesus shows her who he is. By confirming her true identity, he reveals his own. And that is how it still happens. The Messiah is the one in whose presence you know who you really are. 
the good and the bad of it, the all of it, the hope in it. The Messiah is the one who shows you who you are by showing you who he is, who crosses all boundaries, breaks all rules, drops all disguises, speaking to you like someone you have known all your life, bubbling up in your life like a well that needs no dipper so that you can go back to face people you thought you could never face again, speaking to them as boldly as he spoke to you. Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Friends, healing love is a love that enables us to be honest with ourselves. Healing love enables us to do the hard work of admitting just how very thirsty we are, right? And, and how we simply cannot quench our thirst all on our own, right? We've tried, we have tried and we've tried and we've tried. We have tried again and again and again to prove that we are just fine on our own, but we're, but we're not. We, we need Jesus to know who we are. We need Jesus to see ourselves as God intended. And we need the support, right? And the, and the love and the encouragement of others to become who we are meant to be. To, we need the love of others to stay on the path of recovery. And we're all on a path of recovery. So here's something I've been thinking about as I've reflected on the ministry and the work of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. You know, we may think that Wouldn't It Be Lovely is just about the healing of those that participate in the program. And I would never, 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 ever wanna take away anything from the transformative power at work in the lives of the women who are committed to, to doing the steps, right? And to doing the work and engaging the program. But wouldn't it be lovely is also a place of healing love for far more, right? When I witness when I witness the genuine power of healing love, like, like I witness when I shop at your sales and I see how excited you are to offer your work and your creativity and your sweat and your tears right back to us, or, or when I hear your stories or when I celebrate your wins, I feel like I am drawn into it, right? Like the woman at the well was drawn into a conversation with Jesus that loved her into the person that she needed to become. I feel like I am being restored. Like our, our, our world is being restored through the genuine love that is found right here. A few moments ago, I quoted Brad Jerzak saying, when we see Jesus in action, we are seeing the true heart of God the restorer of lives. Friends, I am confident that anyone that participates or witnesses the work of Wouldn't It Be Lovely is seeing Jesus still in action, is seeing Jesus in action in our world today. And I believe that they're seeing the true heart of God, right? The, the heart of God that is about our restoration and our healing. So, bless you, Pastor Margaret Ann. Bless you in this work that you continue to just give yourself to, this self-giving love. And, and bless each of you who are doing the work, right? Who are doing the steps, who are following the program of Wouldn't It Be Lovely? And, and bless you volunteers and bless you donors and, and bless you Douglas Avenue and Pastor Meredith and all that surround this program. Bless you, bless you, bless you. May God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Please join members of the praise band as we sing, Keep Making Me. Make me broken so I can be healed. Cause I'm so callous and now I can't feel. I want to run to you.
so I can be time of prayer, I would like to share with you something that I am so grateful for as we give God thanks. Last week, wouldn't it be lovely learned that the IRS did grant us our 501c3 status. So as of last week, wouldn't it be lovely is now a freestanding nonprofit and I am the executive director and pastor. So that is something that I am very grateful for. It is a dream come true. Um, it is a passion of mine, which all of you know. So I'm so grateful to God for making that possible, for tugging on my heart and pulling me in that direction. I have a lot of hopes, um, and they've asked me to share those. But first, my hope for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We've always been the church where no one knows where we are, but they know who we are. I pray as the year ends, everybody is not only going to know who we are, they'll know where we are, and people will grow in their faith, will grow in numbers, and will grow in faith. My hope for me personally is that I will continue with my walk with God and my faith in God will grow, that I will keep my eyes on God at all times in all decisions. My hopes and dreams for Wouldn't It Be Lovely are big. I hope that I will continue to use my wisdom and the wisdom of others as we consider moving into residential housing. It's always been my dream to have a sanctuary for women that have nowhere to live as they recover from really hard lives. It is a super big endeavor that costs a lot of money, so it is something that we need to do carefully and we need to be certain that it is a wise move. But we're moving in that direction, so I hope that that happens. But also, I just hope that Wouldn't It Be Lovely will continue to be this um, wonderful nonprofit in Springfield, that we will continue to teach people that love truly does heal, and that love is the only way that we can go into this world and change social systems. I just thank you for everything, and I thank you for 
what you have done to make Wouldn't It Be Lovely possible, all of you that are members of Douglas Avenue. But mostly, I thank you for your love. And I hope that together, as we continue to work together, even though we're separate, we are connected. You will always be the founding organization, and I am so proud of that. So as we move together into 2021 and do big things, we will continue to thank God in our daily lives and especially in our prayers. As we continue in prayer, please remember that we want to be in prayer with you. You can use the contact form that's pinned in the comment section. There's a place there in that contact form for your prayer requests that go directly to our pastors and to our prayer team. You can share prayer concerns in the comment section. You can call us and contact us in the church office so that we can be in prayer with you. Please join with me now in this special time of prayer and blessing on this day of celebration. Let us pray. Loving, healing, and abundant God, we are so thankful to be joined together with you and with one another on this special day. We are in awe of the way you connect us together. We are humbled that you choose to work in and through your people in ways small and large to be about your healing love and your restorative justice in your world confident in your power, in your healing, trusting in you, we lift to you the joys and concerns of our hearts for all who are sick and suffering today, for all who are grieving, for all celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, for the continued rollout of COVID-19 vaccinations in an equitable way, particularly for people of color and those communities communities hit hardest by coronavirus deaths, and for our continued commitment to the health and safety of our families, neighbors, and communities. For all experiencing homelessness and those who care for them. For your continued call to eradicate racism within ourselves and our political and social systems, and to work for healing within our communities, nation, and world for the entire world and all of its peoples, for your peace to be our watchword and your justice, the arbiter of our relationships together. For all the ways you call us to serve and show your love in this community, for the micro pantry, meals delivered to the winter warming center, for compass for kids and the new meals that matter, for our relationship with Du Bois Elementary School and so much more. Loving God, we give you thanks, especially this day, for wouldn't it be lovely, and for all who have found life, healing, community, and purpose through its programs and relationships, from associates to volunteers to leadership. Please continue to bless, protect, and empower wouldn't it be lovely with your spirit, spirit, particularly in this new year, to reach even more women as they paint, sew, create, recover, fail, try again, build resiliency and skills, and as they heal because love heals. We are so grateful and cannot wait to see what you do next through wouldn't it be lovely. We thank you for your spirit that led Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to say yes to Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup and wouldn't it be lovely for the years of faithful partnership, resources, love, support, and guidance joyfully given to both. We are excited and humbled to continue the journey together in covenant relationship. We ask for your blessing and guidance as we live into the next season of our ministry together. We especially give you thanks for Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, for your call on her life into ministry within and extended through the United Methodist Church as an ordained elder and through Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in particular. We are grateful for the vision you have given her that has become Wouldn't It Be Lovely and for the grace that caused her to say, yes, Lord, here I am, your servant, send me for the gifts you have given her to lead and inspire, to persevere and to dream and to serve you with all that she is, we are deeply grateful. 
We offer to you now these prayers of thanksgiving in music and in pictures and in our hearts, particularly giving thanks for Margaret Ann. Well, it's safe to say we probably never met Even still, if a betting man was I, I'd bet Every single one of us have found ourselves Standing in the storms of life Soaking wet, but do not fret Chin up, my friend A little bit of rain is not how this thing ends But sometimes we forget So if you understand, let me see those hands Cause everybody needs a little hope you know the kind that turns your great skies blue A little something that'll pull you through Well good news that something's living right inside of you Yeah, oh, it makes you smile when the world says don't It keeps you dancing even when life won't And when the music's gone, keep singing Cause what you've got is hope what you've got is whole What you've got is whole Now maybe you're thinking Yeah, nice try, but you don't know me You don't know the things I hide Well, I walked that road And I felt that pain We are all the same Yeah, everybody needs a little hope Great skies blue, a little something that'll pull you through. Well, good news that something's living right inside of you. Yeah, oh, it makes you smile when the world says don't. It keeps you dancing even when life won't. And when the music's gone, keep singing. Cause what you've got is hope. What you've got is hope. I am thrilled to be joined by the Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup as we continue in prayer. Healing and inspiring God, our entire Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family gives you thanks for being a part of your calling, leading, and equipping of Margaret Ann in ministry over these past eight and a half years. From sharing together in her student pastor work, through the processes of being ordained, of her ministry in and through Douglas Avenue UMC in so many ways, and for the powerful life-changing ministry that is Wouldn't It Be Lovely, we thank you with grateful and humble hearts. If you would like, I invite you all to lift your hands and join me in blessing Margaret Ann. Loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Margaret Ann in a new and powerful way as she lives into her new appointment as full-time executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Protect her, guide her, connect her, inspire her, comfort her, correct her, heal her, equip her. Help her, Lord, to always feel deeply that she is your beloved child, to trust you and your call on her in the fullness of who she is in this time and in this place. You can put your hands down. Help us as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to release Margaret Ann into her new appointment as executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely? Transform our expectations of her ministry and our shared ministry to be in line with your leading and our covenanted life together. Guide us all in this season of transition, growth, and new opportunity. Help us to trust you one another, and the foundation of love and common service with which you have bound us and blessed us. And now, if you will, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Generous giving is a hallmark of love that heals. And we are so grateful here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for the way you have been giving generously of your financial gifts to support and undergird all of the ministries that we are about here. From online ministries to in-person things to all the ways that we're able to serve in the community, your financial gifts make that a reality. We encourage you to give using our online giving portal that is available pinned in the comment section. Also through our webpage. You can set up automatic giving with your financial institution or with ours. Just contact us in the church office if you need some assistance with that. And of course, you can always send in your checks to our office at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Today, we are taking up as well a special love offering to support Wouldn't It Be Lovely on this special day of celebration. We encourage you to make that special gift. You can do that through the online giving portal. Just go to the special drop-down menu and pick Wouldn't It Be Lovely to give your gift, or you can send in a check to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Just put Wouldn't It Be Lovely in the memo section. Thank you for your generous gifts. Please join us in singing our final hymn, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. much for joining in this online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this amazing day of celebration. It has been an honor and a privilege to have you join with us. We pray that your experience has been uplifting and meaningful and powerful and that you will join with Douglas Avenue again for online worship, that you will let us connect with you so that we can be in prayer with you, that we can come up alongside you in your journey of faith, that we can serve together with you and be a part of your life of faith. I want to encourage you again to use that contact form if you have not done so. And remember that there is a place there for your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use that contact form. And as you go into your day, go knowing that you are beloved of God, that Jesus Christ goes with you along the way, bringing healing as only he can, and that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide and empower you in works of love and mercy and justice every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. <laughs>